Welcome to the Hobbit's Destiny Podcast, where your hosts Valentina, Holly, and Zach. Follow along as we explore the idea of destiny and the role it plays in the character's journey. In the first episode, we will discuss the ways that destiny presents itself throughout the first six chapters of The Hobbit. The Hobbit includes the idea of destiny all throughout the book. We can see this in many examples in the first section. By definition, destiny is an event that will happen to someone in the future that can impact one's being. The characters with the most evident destinies at this point are Thorin and Bilbo. Hey guys, what are some of the most prominent examples of destiny we have found in Thorin? Well, Holly, the first one we found is when Smog destroyed the dwarves' village, forcing them to leave. This sets up Thorin's destiny to reclaim the throne and take the land back from Smog. This idea is further explored when Thorin says, Dragons steal gold and jewels, you know, from men and elves and dwarves wherever they can find them. The ultimate goal for the dwarves' journey is to get their home back, and specifically for Thorin, it's his destiny to become the king of the dwarves. All of this sets up Thorin's destiny. Although Thorin is more self-motivated than anything, his role as a leader of the elves pushes him because he doesn't want to let his friends down. This is evident on page 30 when Thorin says, but we have never forgotten our stolen treasure. We still mean to get it back and to bring our curses home to Smog if we can. The next example of destiny we found was the map and key that Gandalf gave Thorin on pages 24 through 26 and 30 and 31. This map leads them back to their kingdom and shows them secret passages to sneak past Smog the dragon. The key is supposed to be used to get into one of these passages. This advances Thorin's plan to reclaim the kingdom and further advances this group's destiny. Thorin's father gave Gandalf the map and key. The map and key finally reaching Thorin from his father shows that completing this quest is destined to happen. The other aspect of destiny here is that it took very long for Gandalf to round up Thorin and the rest of the dwarves. The timing of all this can be seen as destiny as he found them all around the same time when Smog has not been seen for some time. Gandalf reinforced this idea when he said, well, your father gave me the gave me this to give to you and if i had chosen my own time and way for handling handing it over you can hardly blame me considering the trouble i had to find you your father could not remember his own name when he gave me this paper and he never told me yours on page 31. if gandalf had found thorin anytime earlier later or even not at all the timing of their journey would have been completely off and they would not have been as successful to this part of the journey The last example of destiny we found for Thorin was the exact timing they arrived in Rivendell. Here, they learn their map has moon runes on it. Not only that, but one of the only people that still alive that can read the moon runes was waiting for them in Rivendell. Seeing how they had run to so many problems before arriving to Rivendell, it wouldn't have been surprising if they arrived a day early or late, but by destiny they arrived at the perfect night to read the moon runes. And Elrond said on page 63, they can only be seen when the moon shines behind them. And what is more, when the cunning sort is most be a moon with the same shape as the season and day they were written. And if Thorin and the dwarves had their way, they wouldn't have even stopped there at all in the first place. But by pure luck, they let Gandalf convince them to stop in Rivendell. All this is... All this shows that in Thorin's destiny to defeat Smug and reclaim the mountain for the dwarves. What about the examples of destiny found for Bilbo in the first six chapters? Well, to begin with Val, the first glimpse of destiny we see in The Hobbit was actually with Bilbo. Gandalf could have picked just about anybody to accompany the dwarves in their quest, but of all people, he selected Bilbo. The odds of this are very, very slim and shows that it could only have been destined. Bilbo's destiny is reinforced when he finds out about Bilbo's heritage being partly took. That means that there is an adventurous side to him, seeing how very few hobbits are even the slightest bit adventurous. It just has to be built up Bilbo's destiny to go on this quest and awaken his took side. Oh, I get it. So wouldn't part Bilbo's destiny be when he begins to become more adventurous? 
kind of like how he was always scared to do anything at the beginning, but later he tries to steal from the trolls and fight for the dwarves? That's exactly it. On page 51, Bilbo ends up finding a dagger. And as, as Gandalf said, these look like good blades. They were not made by any troll nor by any smith among, these, among men in these parts and days. Bilbo had never used a sword in his life, but he learns that there are some instances where he has to. This dagger or sword will come in handy in, to him later on in the book. He begins to embrace this adventurous side of himself and grows as a character. It was destined for Bilbo to find the sword, as it will help him achieve his ultimate destiny in the end. We can't forget about the last major piece of destiny we found. After all, it is quite a turning point. That's right. It's when Bilbo, out of pure sheer luck, finds Gollum's ring. It was really lucky seeing how Bilbo was in pitch black tunnel and was crawling around on all fours when he found it, and he put it in his pocket without thinking. Not to mention that Gollum never took his eyes off that ring, since it was his prized possession. Gollum just happened to drop it not too long before Bilbo passed by. We already get the sense that this ring is very powerful and will help him greatly on his journey. That's all we have for today. Thanks for listening to episode one of The Hobbit's Destiny.